Hello, my name is Ivan Gazlovi. In today's video, we will explore native MQTT support in NAT server. In the video description, you'll find the link to a repo that contains details and instruction and all scripts used in this demonstration. We will be using a manufacturing line PackML MQTT Simulator 2. You can check this project, there's a link in the readme. Let's get started. First, we will run the MQTT Simulator. By the way, we are running Docker images, so Docker is really the only thing you need to have installed for this whole demonstration. Once started, you will see that the simulator connects to some MQTT um, server in the cloud. And here's the URL. We are now going to start an MQTT client that creates a subscription on a topic that the simulator is sending messages to. Uh, we are also going to use an MQTT uh, MQTT client, but this time to publish MQTT messages. Uh, these are commands that are sent to the simulator. First, to reset its state, and then to start producing messages. So, we are now sending the start command. Once the command is received, you can see that the simulator starts sending messages, and the subscription is receiving them. Okay, so we have MQTT applications running using some MQTT server. Uh, we will now see how easy it is to replace this MQTT server with a NAT server. We will run the latest NAT uh, server Alpine image uh, and provide a configuration file. So let's have a look at this configuration. It's really simple. We just define a server name. Um, enable JStream, which is needed by MQTT in order to persist some state. Then we open the MQTT port. So now let's run the server. We see that the server um, accepts the two types of clients, MQTT and regular clients on the traditional port. Now let's restart the simulator, but this time uh, we will pass NAT's option to the script. And this is simply uh, making the MQTT applications connect to the local NAT server Docker image by using the link Docker command line option. Uh, once it's running, uh, you will see that it connected to the NAT server here. And the service console shows that it did accept an MQTT client and created JStream assets for that uh, client. Before we started the MQTT subscription, let's reset the state of the simulator by sending it a reset command. And we use the NATS uh, as the first argument to make it connect to the NATS server. Finally, uh, let's restart the MQTT subscription. And again, note the use of NATS as the first argument. Now that the MQTT simulator is ready, uh, let's send it a start command. Uh, as before, uh, we see that MQTT messages are being produced and consumed by the subscription. Now we are going to run a NAT subscription to show that MQTT messages can be received uh, by NAT applications. We run a NATS box Docker image and start a subscription with the URL of our NAT server and the subject equivalent to the MQTT topic, simply replacing slashes by dots and greater than, which means any token after the last one. And there you go, Mes MQTT messages are received by NATS subscription. Uh, the bridge between MQTT and NATS is seamless. There's nothing special to do. There are some rules regarding MQTT topics to NATS subject translation, which are described in NATS IO documentation. And the exchange goes both ways uh, from and another NATS box, we will run now a NATS publisher to send a command to the simulator to stop the message flow. Um, so the NATS server has converted the NATS message to an MQTT message and send it to the MQTT simulator, which uh, has now st um, stopped sending messages. Okay, so this demonstrates how easy it is to replace an MQTT server with a NATS server. Uh, that has MQTT enabled. The application did not have to do anything, just point to the NAT server's MQTT port, and that's it. And we saw that message can flow from MQTT to NAT and vice versa.
For the last part of the demonstration, we will now be running a NAT server that has a leaf node connection to Synadia's NGS, which is a NAT supercluster spreading different geos and cloud providers around the globe. The only difference in the configuration file is the leaf node section. It creates a um, leaf node connection to NGS and needs a credentials file. In order to get this file, you will need to get an NGS account and you will need at least to sign up for the developer plan which gives you access to leaf node connections. Follow the sign up process and at the end you should have a credentials file. Make a copy of it and put it in the creds directory and name it test.creds so you don't have to modify the configuration file. As you can see I have it here now. So now we run the NAT server and you will notice that it is now creating a leaf node connection to NGS and the connect.ngs.global URL will connect it to the closest cluster in NGS which for us would be uh, US West. We restart the simulator and MQTT subscription the same way than before. This still connect to our local NAT server. Uh, let's reset the state of the simulator and for the NAT subscription uh, we will now uh, connect it to NGS by providing the connect.ngs.global URL and uh, the uh, credentials file. We will make it a bit more interesting by changing it to a queue subscription uh, that will demonstrate the geo failover and let's name this queue MQTT. In the second NATS box, we will add a member to this group, uh, but to simulate that we connect from somewhere else in the world, we will use a URL of a cluster that is in Japan. And we provide the creds file and specify the same queue name. Since the data will be produced by our NATS server that connected using connect.ngs.global, the queue subscription using that same URL, the one at the top right, is the one that's going to receive all messages. So now let's uh, start to produce some message. So we will send the command to the simulator to start producing message. So there you go. Uh, we see that the queue member at the top is receiving messages while the one connecting Japan does not. We now simulate a failure by stopping the first queue member. And as soon as we do that, then the new messages are automatically routed to the other member. To conclude, we hope we have convinced you that using a NAT server as a drop-in MQTT server replacement to securely connect to a remote NAT cluster or supercluster is compelling. You can keep your existing IoT investment and use NATs for secure, resilient, and scalable access to your stream and services. Thank you for watching.